And hello, everybody. This is Bob Noctis sitting alongside Lightning Slim, and you are here at Quad City Chaos in Toronto. We are about to watch the Boston Massacre kick off against Pittsburgh Steel Hurton. And there we go, already with a lead jammer. That is not rocket science wearing the yellow of Steel Hurton for Pittsburgh. She is lead jammer. Yeah, nice shirt whip right there. In the meantime, I am mangle you. Out of the pack, she's out towards the back. They're going to wrap that up. That's called off. One jam under our belts here at Quad City Cast. Both of these teams coming off losses earlier in the day. Yes. Uh, and in pretty good games. They're pretty close games, well played games. Steel Hurt and falling to the Rito Valley Vixens. That's right. And then uh, Boston falling to Toronto's very own CN Power. Uh, as we talked about before, I think it's going to be a really interesting matchup as to whether or not the Steel Hurt and can put up with the strength of what we see out of Boston. And for Boston, it's King with lead jammer status. A star pass for Steel Hurton. They have given the star to Hurricane Heather. And oddly enough, the first time she has jammed today. And so just one point apart, 28 and a half minutes remaining in the first period of play. Steel City for Boston Massacre with three. For those of us who have watched the Steel Hurton for a long time, we're used to seeing Hurricane Heather as a staple in the jamming stable. Uh, she's been playing pivot almost the entire day so far so that she's available to pass the star too, but that's it. And here's Rock Hard Candy for Steel Hurt, and she has lead. Meanwhile, her opposite number, the jammer for Boston, has escaped the pack also, but it is Rock Hard Candy for Steel Hurt, and she's inside the pack, gets inside the pack, grabs what she can, calls off the jam. That is a four-point pickup for Pittsburgh. Yeah, a very loose pack that time around, Slim. Uh, oddly enough, neither one of the jammers really held up all that much. A very quick, uh, a very quick four points put it in the book. Steel Hurton played a very fast pack game against the Rito Valley Vixens. That was not to their advantage in that particular case. They did not win that contest. Nope. Now, however, they are ahead. The score, 8-3 to three in favor of Steel City with 27 and a half minutes remaining. We see now River Kicks jamming for Steel City against Rock, captain of the Boston Massacre. Man. And this is the first time we've seen Rock Jam. And of course, we all, you and I both know that sometimes by putting somebody else out there, it, it changes the whole perspective of your defense. You're right, Bob. Not traditionally used to that jammer, although Rock's acquitting herself admirably. Put themselves into the center of the pack also. Oh, and with physical play, creating <laughs> space. <laughs> Who needs an open inside line slim when you just create one? Four points on the board for Boston. My apologies, that is the full five. A grand slam for Rock. And once again, the star passed to Hurricane Heather for Steel Hurton. They, see, they seem to be using this tactic pretty often, twice in a row. Yep, and the Hurton hoping to have gotten a couple of points out of this. Hurricane Heather putting two fingers in the air. Luckily for her, the jam ref agrees. <laughs> It's so much nicer between everybody when they match. Just two points apart, Steel City at 10, Boston Massacre eight, 26 minutes remain. Two new opponents on the 1234 Skate Company Jammer Line. It's Maya Mangleyu for Boston. She faces Snot Rocket Science. And of course, Snot Rocket Science being held to very few points by Riddell Valley earlier this morning, looking she's, to redeem herself. She's recycled there by Womanimal, but Maya Mangleyu taking the penalty here. This will result in a power jam for Steel City. And we see the, the pack start to set themselves up slowly. She goes at him pretty hard. 
it's not rocket science. It hits that back hard, uses that leg power, and she's able to get herself through. That's going to be one pass. She comes out with the full five on that inside the pack again, almost as if she teleported in there. Getting a little roughed up and pushed to the inside there. Womanimal going to work, hip to hip. It's not rocket. Oh, with great balance. Terrific. Recovers. That's right. Been there, done that, bought the t-shirt. That'll be another five points. Maya Mangalyu back from the penalty area, back into the action also, but she too is recycled. It's now Rocket Science back at the front of the pack. Getting roughed up there by Woman Animal and Ginger Kid acting in a blocking capacity. It's not Rocket Science outweights, outlasts. She is through. And just in time as Shark Week shows up to help. A multiple point jam here for Snot Rocket Science. She's around, through, in again, just about 20 seconds remaining in the jam. And we see her hit the floor uh, coming out of turn two. She's gonna call off the jam. And we're gonna put that one in the books. Twenty-four minutes remaining in the first period of play. Steel City climbing to a lead of 28. That will put them 20 points ahead of Boston, sitting at eight. Uh, very similar to the game this morning. They came out great guns. First three, four jams had a had put up about 30 points, only to have a R Riddell Valley turn around and uh, take that back very quickly. Flying King tries the outside. But ahead of King, Leanna Lecter pulls into lead. Both of these jammers, girls that you're gonna see out there jamming quite a bit today. Both of them with big reps this morning. Look at the speed of that pack, Slim. Fast pack situation, yes. Old time derby, coach. <laughs> I do look like one of the Hanson brothers, I'm sure. The next jam will be brought to you by our friends at KT Tape. KT Tape, elastic sports tape for pain relief and support. Available at the Toronto Roller Derby merch table right here. Or if you folks at home want to order, they are at kttape.com. That's going to be hard times out in front for Boston. I believe this is the first time hard times is jammed it, it is. in this tournament. Uh, it, it is dead. I think she may have jammed once this morning, but yeah, she's that is not the capacity she's been used in. She does hard, a lot of blocking up front. Hard times jammed against Rock Hard Candy. However, the jam called off early. Nothing either way on that one. The score remains Steel City 30. Boston Massacre 9, 22 minutes remaining. And think about how, how important this really becomes, Slim, as neither one of them wants to lose twice. That's right. Both these teams traveling a long way. Already enduring a loss here. Maya Mangaliu skating for Boston and for Pittsburgh. It is River Kicks. River Kicks up against a brace through. All bodies fall in a heap. That allows Maya Mangaliu into that lead jammer position. Yeah, Kicks having a hard time up front. There was a nice move by Hurricane Heather to uh, positionally block her opponent out of the way to let uh, River Kicks through. Ginger oh, Kid helps my. her fellow jammer off, and Maya Mangu plows into that pack. I can't remember the last time I've seen a jammer deliver a hit like that. And Maya Mangu skating backwards, keeping her eyes on the referee, because I think she had the question in her mind, as did the rest of us, did I receive a penalty <laughs> on that play? Yeah. I think she was uh, surprised to discover she had not and yeah. made her way to the front of the pack to call off that, that jam. That was tail over tea kettle. There was no question about that. This jam brought to you by our friends at Sisu Mouthguard. Sisu Mouthguard's more protection, less mouthguard. The AeroGuard, 1.6 ounces, designed for athletes who prefer to easily talk, breathe, and drink during game time. And in the meantime, you see Snot Rocket Science stuck at the back of the pack, going to make herself through, but she's not lead jammer, as that's going to go to Lil Payne.
Lil Payne grabs what she can, calls the jam off just as uh, she receives a hit from Necrophiliac. And she'll receive a lot of them from Necrophiliac. That, that was the perfect timing. She was not going to get out of that block. Uh, Necrophiliac uh, worked herself to the bone during that initial bout this morning against Rio yes. Valley and was blocking everything in sight. And I expect more of that from yes. her in this bout. Very tenacious. Action underway again. Steel City doubling up on Boston. 30 to 15. 19 and a half minutes remain. Leanna Belector, lead jammer for Steel. Leanna Belector, a terrific, terrific jammer. She's, she's got the footwork, she's got the speed, she's got the size to make things happen, as you see right there. And she's going to take the full pass and call off the jam. Lecter grabs what she can before King can engage with the pack. That holds King scoreless. We'll see in just a moment how many points Leanna Belector was able to put up. It yep. is four. Yep. If you're just joining us, this is the Boston Massacre against Steel Hurton of Pittsburgh. Steel Hurton in the yellow, Boston Massacre in the blue. You're watching this courtesy of Layer 9 Productions. Lead jammer to Boston. And of course, it's going to be up to Rock Hard Candy right now to put enough pressure on her to get her to call it off. Hard times jamming. For Boston, hard times, hits the pack, runs into Snot Rocket. Snot Rocket acting as a jammer, calls it, and Boston able to receive two. Wow. She was very focused on getting around Snot Rocket Science to pull a one point. In the meantime, she ended up surrendering two for the easier route taken by Boston. We have an official review called here by Steel Hurton. And, of course, uh, timeouts are brought to us by Roller Derby Athletics. Uh, we want to remind you that Roller Derby Athletics can be visited at RollerDerbyAthletics.com where you can transform your game. Clock currently frozen at 18 minutes, 8 seconds in the first period of play. Boston Massacre with a score of 17. Steel City doubling up on them once again, a score of 34. So far, what do you think, Slim? Was this the kind of game you were expecting? It's been fast, Bob. Yeah. Um, I, a lot more fast packs than I was expecting. Fast packs not working really for either of these teams in, uh, in the contest they were in previously, but they seem willing to race it out just the same. Yeah, and that, my, my observations exactly. I expected a slower, harder-hitting pack, though I do think it does work to the Steel Hurton's advantage to try and stay out of that as much as possible. Well, yeah, I do believe the grinding power belongs to Boston in this equation, Bob. You're right about that. We'll see if Boston uh, catches on and is able to slow things down and maybe work their tempo as the bout progresses. Yeah. For those of you that, were, that weren't able to tune in this morning and see CN Power play against Boston, it was probably the most grinding, brutal game inside of the pack that I have seen in a long, long time. Uh, and uh, let's be honest, Bob, that that bout was not an elegant affair. No, it no. Was, it was very much um, all about attrition. Yep. It was very much about uh, penalties. It was smash mouth. Uh, it was not about speed, uh, but it was, it, was, it was brutal. It was really a brutal, brutal game. We've just received word from uh, the refereeing staff that uh, Pittsburgh has challenged the two points that were scored in the previous jam, and those two points have been removed from Boston's score. They are now at 15-34 to 34 for steel. And I kind of wondered about that. And we take a look right now. Maya Mangalyu is your lead jammer about to embark on her scoring pass. Oh, with a bit of ease, Maya Mangalyu able to slip through there, gets the full five. Meanwhile, inside the pack, and there's that grinding we were talking about. Yep. River Kicks on the receiving end of multiple hits from Boston. Yeah, River Kicks really in some trouble right now. She's not even through on her initial pass yet. And the focus so much to the inside on her by her teammates that it's allowed Maya Mangalyu really a free outside lane. 
Maya Mangui with another five points on the board. River Kicks finally <laughs> scoots out of the pack, perhaps grateful to have escaped. Maya Mangalyu taking a hit there from Hurricane Heather. Hurricane Heather inverts, engages with Mangalyu again, and Mangles calls it off. But that right there, talk about giving the perfect segue in <laughs> what Boston could do at the pack. Uh, they showed us exactly what we had talked about seeing earlier this morning. And that was surrounding, containing, and just absolutely crushing jammers. A tidy jam there for the Boston Massacre, Bob. That brings them up to a score of 28, well within striking distance of Steel City at 34. 16 and a half minutes remain. And we have a brief timeout. That's right. Of course, our timeout brought to you by Roller Derby Athletics. This is a Roller Derby Athletics timeout. Roller Derby Athletics wants you to be strong, fierce, and unstoppable. Find out more at rollerderbyathletics.com. Strong, fierce, and unstoppable would describe quite a bit of the play we've seen already today here at Quad City Chaos, Bob. Lots yeah. of great roller yeah. derby happening. So far, all of the uh, Division I games have been down to the wire. Uh, they've not been won until maybe the last four or five minutes. No, no lead has been safe, absolutely. And I would say Steel City's uh, lead, not safe at all. <laughs> no, not at <laughs> the moment. 16 and a half minutes remaining in the first period. 34, Steel City, Boston Massacre at 28. And again, uh, this is very much how they started out at the first game of the day. <laughs> uh, false start? <laughs> I don't know, the whistles blew and everybody smiled, and I think it's a do-over. This is raring to go here. A new jammer for Boston, that's Womanimal. Yeah, Womanimal had maybe one, maybe two jams this morning. She's facing Snout Rocket Science. Womanimal, a Team Switzerland skater from the World Cup, and there she is, lead coming through on the inside. Yeah, she's very wily. She, she's got... Uh, she's that with the long legs and the way that she's able to dart around inside of that pack doing a nice job there you see she f she opens up her own inside line slim and that is the full five for her as she comes through snot rocket wrestling with ginger kid at the front of the pack but she escapes snot rocket science skating in the free and open spaces penalty there to planets of boston oh my they're still hurting again we saw this earlier this morning they get distracted. They left the inside line wide open. Well, Manimal able to make that pass without being touched. And Boston has changed the lead in this game, Bob. 36 to 34. They pulled ahead by two with 15 and a half left in the first. And we're going to see a little different lineup right now as, as we're going to see uh, Rock and Lil Payne line up a little further out from the pack. Didn't get what they wanted from it. Leanna Belector in the lead. King giving chase. Leannable inverts, tries to get the hips passed, puts herself into the pack, calls it off, grabs what she can. She was able to shut the door on King and pick up four for herself. Wow, that's a nice, nice move. I wasn't quite sure there, Slim, if she got the last two. No, it was a oh, matter wait. of split seconds, Bob, and yep. that, was a, that was the textbook four in the door. I like that. I've not heard that before. <laughs> this jam is brought to you by Now Magazine, Toronto's alternative news and entertainment source. Now Magazine is the official media sponsor of Toronto Roller Derby. NowToronto.com. Yeah, right there. I don't know how hard, how hard Rock Candy got herself almost through the pack only to get stopped. And we're seeing hard times out there again for the second time. Hard times now approaching the pack. A very fast pack once again, Bob. And hard times forced to, to just dive into the center of things and call it off. And that will result in a no scoring jam, nothing either way. Well, honestly, I think this is, I, I really do feel that this is the way Steel City needs to play in order to, to, in order to take this game.
Once again, only two points separate these teams. These, this time, for the moment, Steel City ahead, 38, Boston 36. 13.31 on the clock, here we go. The Jammers neck and neck, I'm not entirely sure who's being pointed at, Snar Rocket. <laughs> and Lil Payne, it is Lil Payne who has yeah, lead. I think so, I think so. And I tell you, she did that all she did that all on her own. That was sheer leg strength that got her through that pack on that pass. Snow Rocket wake riding against Lil Payne, chasing her as quickly as she can. And that will result in another no scoring jam. The the Steel City bench celebrating. That is a victory for them. Oh yeah, there's no question. And you know what? It's Bone Crusher, one player that takes off. And the one thing that is so hard about coaching a team it's getting them not to chase when somebody runs. It's 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 just I think it's just your natural uh, your natural instinct is to go after them, and that's what they did. Oh, and the natural instinct of King there was to look at that open outside lane and just dive right through. King has lead. Yeah, that's got to be the quickest anybody's gotten through the pack all day today. Leanna Belecta recycled and now taking physical punishment. She has taken off her helmet cover. It was a stash. She has recovered it, put it back on her helmet. But King on a scoring pass inside the pack. There she, King now skating. Oh, and recycled. That allows Leanna Belecta into the pack, but the jam is called. Yeah, she just got caught almost as she had cleared it, but it was enough to steer her backward, put her out of bounds, forcing her to recycle. And there goes the seesaw again, Bob. Boston Massacre <laughs> pulls ahead 44 to Steel City's 38. It, doing it by spoonfuls, each absolutely. team. Absolutely. And it, it, what it comes down to is, is which team is able to execute the style that they want to play each jam. It changes each time. You see Steel Hurt and pull. Maya Mangle, you find some space. Picks up lead for Boston. Penalty coming there. That is the Steel City penalty. Meanwhile, Rock Hard Candy chasing the pack. Maya Mangle, you in a scoring position. She decides. She hears her bench calling out, just calls it off. Well, I'll tell you, that was Hurricane Heather that stopped that. That could have that could have been a lot more points. Hurricane Heather, Heather able to, to uh, turn around and stop Maya Mangle, you in turn three. That forces her to call off the jam. Yeah, if Mangle, you had been able to escape from the pack, she might have been able to come around for another full pass. Yep. Hard times in Snout Rocket Science. They are the jammers of the right now. Oh, look at that. Hard times. I tell you, Boston does have an instinct for finding the inside line. Last I heard, Slim, it was the shortest way around the track. And uh, I think that Boston has been able to find Steel City napping at these start whistles. Yes. They've been able yes. to whip into this lead jammer position very easily. And there's hard times at the behest of her bench, just calling it off after picking up a quick four. No, you're absolutely right. It, it, it does absolutely feel like they're either so focused on something else that, that there's an assignment being missed or that they're just... They're just not quite as quick off the line. Boston Masker now pulling into sort of a bit of a lead. 51 to 38 over Steel City. 940 left on the first period clock. Leanna Belector faces Lil Payne. They come out of the pack wow. together, but it is Lil Payne who has lead. She is the she was the lead jammer, but she wasn't the jammer in the lead. She calls it off. Boy, I tell you, when Leanna Belector came through there, it was fast because Lil Payne looked like she was going to come out in the open. Twenty fifteen Quad City Chaos here in sunny Toronto. It's not that sunny, actually. It's kind of gloomy, <laughs> but we're inside watching but Derby, and it is great. Warm Animal and Rock Hard Candy, your respective jammers. Oh, oh it's both of them stumbling through the pack. That yeah. will result in a Boston penalty. 
But Womanimal able to keep things in control. Womanimal lead jammer. Rock Hard Candy giving chase. Both jammers now eligible to score. The pack moving very quickly. Yeah, well, Womanimal really able to, uh, really doing a nice job jamming in this game. Like I said, we, we didn't see her. If we did see her, we didn't see her more than once earlier this morning. No, Womanimal called upon to block in that previous bout, and she did so very, very well. Yes. Uh, hard times also added to the jamming rotation this time around, something we did not see the first game this morning. No change to the score in that jam. Boston Massacre continues to lead Steel City 51-38, just under eight minutes to play in the first period. In fact, the only noticeable difference between either team is that Space Invader is not rostered for this particular game. Space Invader, uh, maybe a little tired. She did receive a lot of physical attention in that previous bout. She was not particularly successful off the jammer line. That may have reflected that decision also. Lead jammer to snot rocket science of Steel Hurton. Steel Hurton wearing the yellow and black of Pittsburgh. Boston and in the blue and white. It's not rocket science not having the gift of lead jam percentage on her side by any way, shape, or form today. So that turns out for her. That does grab some of that back for her and two points to boot. And it's not rocket science back out on the floor. You can see this time she's going to be directing traffic coming off of our 1234 Skate Co. jammer line. Lil Payne jamming against Leanna Belector. Leanna Belector makes her way to the front. Leanna Belector is lead, but Lil Payne giving chase. And once again, the pack just picking up a tremendous amount of speed. Stopping now. Both teams setting up defensive positions. Leanna Belector engages just quickly, swivels the hips, grabs two, calls it off. And of course, that's a good move that was stacked in her favor. Boston at the back of that. She takes the two points. And at 51.42, two points is plenty. I see out there number 25 for Steel Hurton, Allie McKill. We have just been informed she's playing her 100th sanctioned bout in the Women's Flat Track Derby Association. That's right. Congratulations. How exciting is that? In the world of uh, Flat Track Roller Derby, that's quite a career. Yes, it is. And speaking of careers, I would say uh, Shark Week's doing a pretty good job with hers. <laughs> Shark Week... Uh, She's a monster. Never accused of not taking the physical play. <laughs> no, no. Hurricane Heather heads to the penalty area. <laughs> Meanwhile, for Boston, Hard Times has lead. She's completed her initial pass, now scoring. Her opposite number, four steal. City stuck within the pack. Hard Times through. Takes oh. a bump there from Dakota Slammon, but maintains vertical integrity. Comes out. She has four. And, of course, right now, Hard Rock Candy, she's just kind of gliding out to see where she's going to fall into this thing. Looks like Hard Time's going to keep skating. Four-point jam again there for Hard Times. Hard Times engaging with the pack again. A defensive position set up by Steel City, a braced four wall. You see a triangle there, and then they're sending in another missile, the, the fourth player, <laughs> up against Hard Times. Oh. And she decides that's enough of that. Yeah, of course, we've seen the development of this three, this kind of, the kind of wedge defense or whatever people want to call it, uh, with the three blockers out front and uh, the entrapment of the jammer, and of course, making it virtually impossible for her to get free without a struggle. Boston now opening up a polite lead in what has been a seesaw contest. 63 to 43 over Steel City, 20 points ahead, just under four minutes remaining in the first period. Snot Rocket Science makes a play to the outside, takes a hit and cuts the track. 
Yeah, and, it, and as you as you notice, the arms going up and down in the air. That's how Boston seems to indicate to their team that they've just they just put themselves in a power jam scenario. Maya Mangalyu doing the fist pump herself. She knows she is in that power jam situation. She holds two fingers in the air, and I have noticed, Bob, that Boston has put together some set plays for these situations. And. And that way, and obviously that would make sense. They give her the opportunity potentially to call what it is she wants to do, whether she's going to go up against the pack alone or if she's looking for help. And in this power jam, she does have the time and space to sort of ask for this play to be put together for her. Yes. Successful in this case, she comes out. Well, she did attack it alone the first time. Then they came in. Then the cavalry came running, and they popped, they popped it, the, the wall open for her. The jam finishes as Snot Rocket Science comes out of the penalty area. Maya Mangle, you able to put up the full five on that pass. And of course, the interesting thing about this slam, we've not seen a jam that I think has scored more than probably nine or ten points. No, they've been doing this by spoonfuls, Bob. And uh, we've had a really exciting grinding contest out of it. Even though the packs have moved quickly, there's been no shortage of physical play. No. Leanna Belector moves to the front. She's skating against Rock. Hard times there. Tried to, no, it was. I uh, take that back. Number 850. Leanna Belector on a scoring pass inside the pack. Rock now skating in the free and open spaces. Leanna Belector calling off that jam. She put up four for Steel City before the jam finished. Holding Rock scoreless. And we're in the final minute and a half of the first period of play. Boston Massacre, a score of 68. Steel City, 47. You're watching Quad City Chaos 2015 here on Layer 9. And this is what Boston can do. Steel City not having any less of an effect doing the same thing at the moment. Flying King doing as their name suggests, flying. It's not rocket science, giving pursuit, but it is King now receiving jammer support inside the pack. It was kind of interesting the way that was done. I, I think one of the blockers kind of realized that if she pulled back and let it go, like letting go in a game of tug of war, her jammer would shoot out of there. And that's pretty much what happened. That will bring Boston to 71. Steel City 49. Just about 30 seconds remaining. That will allow us to begin one more jam without further delays. Boston's jammer flies out in turn number one. That allows Steel City to move into lead position. That's and right. Uh, hard times almost with a fan meet and greet in turn number one. Rock Hard Candy grabs and goes. Waggling four fingers in the air. We'll see if uh, the referee is operating with the same mathematics. <laughs> or number of digits. Three. Three, says the jam referee for Steel City. That will bring us to halftime, Bob. Well, I tell you, so far, Slim, we have seen we've seen a little bit of everything. We've seen we've seen the physical play that we expected out of Boston. Uh, we weren't really sure exactly what we would see out of out of Steel Hurt, I don't think, but we saw the speed. I and think Steele wanted to race initially. Oh, yeah, Boston, I agree with you. Boston fell into that trap until they realized they could lock things down yeah. and do things physically within the pack that would give them that advantage over Steel City, which is why we sit where we do with Boston ahead. Yeah, no, I think you're right. And, and it became commanding the front part of the pack, especially off the start. Of course, obviously, if they could control the front, they could set the tempo, keep them from getting stuck in the chase. And... And that's what leaves us where we are right now with just a 19-point differential. 
You are watching Quad City Chaos 2015. My name is Lightning Slim. I'm Bob Noxious, and we're going to be back in about 15 minutes. And this is Bob Noxious sitting alongside Lightning Slim. Hello, everyone. And, of course, you are at the, well, maybe you don't know. If you don't know, you are at the halftime or about to begin the second half of Pittsburgh Steel Hurton uh, playing up against Boston Derby Dames Boston Massacre. And I'll tell you, it's been a really interesting game, Slim. I don't know. It's, it's, it's a horrible way to put it. But it's exactly no, no. What it as is. they say, may you live in interesting times. And I think it's been interesting like that for yeah. Steel City after initially running away from Boston, then they got sort of sucked in to playing Boston's uh, grinding inside the pack game, and they they're they're the worst for it at the moment, Bob. And yeah, uh, but what, what's really interesting is we don't often see a game that has played stylistically so opposite. You know, we see a lot of people play a very similar style game, and maybe somebody out executes that. But in this particular situation, we're watching a team that, you're right, is literally trying to run, create the chase, create the speed, because that's where they excel against another team that wants to slow it down. Yeah, we're seeing not only the it's, crap out of it's, it. it's not just a game between two teams, it's, it's about different philosophies. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we should point out that all of this is just part of one bout in yeah. a whole weekend. You're watching Quad City Chaos here live from Toronto and Layer 9 Productions. Not only that, you, this is not even the first game for either of these two teams, both of them having already played today. That's right. Steel City uh, losing to the Rideau Valley Vixens and uh, Boston having difficulty and also losing to the home team, CN Power of Toronto. So, once again, one of those uh, intangibles that factors into uh, moments like this. We'll see which of these two teams overcomes adversity. And for those of you that, who have not taken a look at the lineup and love to talk about rankings, the four chartered leagues that are here today are all within about 11 slots of each other. That's right. We're all like we're talking high 20s to, to low 30s. To high yeah. 30. Yes. yes. So uh, you couldn't ask for better matchups. Oh, the, the parody has been uh, on display during these bouts, which has made things very exciting. Uh, before we go to gameplay, Bob, maybe take a moment to talk about penalties. There have been quite a few of those, but I'm looking over at the penalty board, and I should say that no particular player on either squad has more than four, and there is only one skater with four penalties. So it's been pretty evenly distributed between the two teams. Yep, absolutely. And, and it, power jams have not played into it in a lopsided manner at all either. No, I think we, we haven't had a, a more than 20-point jam in that first half. But we're just about ready to begin again here. Boston Massacre, a score of 71. Steel City, 52. 30 minutes on the clock. Snot Rocket Science in the yellow, jamming for Steel City. She's jamming against Maya Mangalyu, number 1111 in the blue for Boston. Maya Mangalyu, she has lead. I'll tell you, Slim, that's one of the things that has to change. When you've got a talent like Snot Rocket Science, who generally should be coming out of that pack first so many times and has only had a couple lead jams all day long, that formation coming off the jammer line just is not working for them. No, Snow Rocket Science has not seen the degree of success we've seen from her in the past uh, in that jamming position. Um, that may reflect whether or not, uh, not she's responding to the strategies of the blocking core in front of her. I don't know if it's specific to her uh, in herself, but it's not working out for her on this particular weekend. No, she seems to spend a lot of time being stuck in the in the center of the pack. Leanna Belector, however. Yes. <laughs> there she goes. Lead for Steel City. And her finding the inside line has just been what she's done every time. Leanna Belector was able to gain lead against Rideau Valley this morning almost every single time. However, the speed of Rideau, uh, Rideau Valley's jammers 
held her to just a couple of points in those jams. There she is on a scoring pass. She calls it off, and she has picked up a 4-0, and oh, which is something she was unable to do this morning. That's Leanna Belecher scoring for Steel City. No, you're, and that, you've put that exactly right. She'd come out, she, her lead jam percentage has been very high. Her points per jam today uh, is something that she hopes she's going to have more success with the second half, and they're going to need it from her. Shania Payne of Rideau Valley was able to outrace her and hold her. Oh, of course, Shania Payne going down with an injury yes. for Rideau Valley. We may not see her in Rideau Valley's game following this one. We'll see how that plays out. But right now, for Boston, wow. it is King. Oh. King has lead. Oh. <laughs> Unabated, I think, it would be the word. Wow. And seemingly unopposed as King just <laughs> found a little bit of space on the inside line. Squeezed through a, a space maybe about the size of a dime around. Scooted through there, and that's a quick three points for Boston. And she is having... A tremendous amount of success in this game. She played well this morning. She's playing at a different level right now this afternoon. Maya Mangle, you returning to the jammer line. She faces Leanna Belector. And again, we have an interesting starting scenario. Yes, Boston moving way out front, creating some space there. Yeah, it's interesting because the Steel Hurt and tried it last half without success. And that certainly backfired as Leanna Belector yeah. has lead. Maya Mangui was recycled almost a quarter of the track and now playing catch up as she has escaped the pack in the free and open spaces. But meanwhile, Leanna Belector inside that pack cuts through, calls it off with four. And she has individually, in just a handful of jams, made up about half of the difference. A strange part. choice there for Boston is they dictated yeah. the starting positions there, moving out front, and that, uh, well, Steel Hurton just took full advantage, picking up four points out of that scenario. Boston, 75, Steel City at 60, 26 minutes remaining. Okay, that time, Snot Rocket Science looking for that outside lane and finding it. Snot Rocket Science with lead. She waits for hard times, tries to engage with hard times. That might have backfired on her as oh. hard times is able to move through the pack. There's no Put question. up four points. There's no question that that backfired. I don't think she really had an idea what was in front of her in turn four when she made the decision. And she ran up into a, basically into a human wall. Bob, I think these teams are trying things. <laughs> yeah. And we're, we're, we're seeing it unfold in front of us what is going to stick and what isn't. And actually, that's one of the things that's made this game so much fun. And it's folks at home, if you want to tell us if what we're doing is sticking with you. You can reach <laughs> us uh, using the hashtag. <laughs> yeah. Yes, the hashtag talk to numeral two QCC as in Quad City Chaos. You can reach us on the Twitters and let us know how we're doing or if you're seeing something that we're not out there on the track in this very exciting boat. Or if you're watching this and enjoying it, get it up on your Facebook page. Get some more friends involved. That's right, get that hashtag, spread it around, let people know there's some fantastic derby going down here in beautiful Toronto this evening. You will seriously not find four charter teams as equally matched as what we have here this weekend. King. King skating against Rock Hard Candy. Rock Hard Candy finds the inside. Lead jammer for Steel City, Rock Hard Candy. Meanwhile, inside the pack, King has two to beat. Stretching out that pack oh. as far as humanly possible. Now King skating in the free and open spaces and Rock Hard Candy on a scoring pass. She, she can basically skip from one side of the track to the other in one leap. And it's good to be King this game, that's for Steel City requesting three points, receiving two. I believe there was a ghost point involved, they felt. 
no review on the play. Oh, there we go. Yes. That looks like it, yep, it's going to be changed to three. Yes, the referees had a word with each other. And yeah, that, that has been changed to the full, the, the three points. Bit of a high five on the uh, Steel City bench there because they managed to do that without using their official review. Exactly. Just with a, with a quick word, they were able to uh, achieve their ends. Twenty-four minutes remaining in the contest. Steel City sixty-five. Boston Massacre in the lead at seventy-nine. Leanna Lecter. Wow. Leannabel has lead. Lil Payne jamming for Boston. Now she escapes the pack, but it is Leanna Lecter barging her way into the pack. Bit of friendly fire. She runs over Ali McKill. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> well, it's one of the, one of the dangers of being of the job, isn't it? <clears throat> Indeed, there might be a little. If you're tight in that pack and your jammer comes in hot, there might be some collateral damage. <laughs> Yeah, that's right, and, and uh, when you've got Leanna Lecter, who must be about 5'10", she comes in hot, yep, she moves people. Sometimes it's all worth it to Steel City bringing themselves within 10 at 69 to Boston 79. Action underway again, hard times. Skating in the blue for Boston. Two to beat at the front of the pack. Snot Rocket Science held all the way at the back of the pack as Boston has lead. Well, you know, I, I think they've really gotten into Snot Rocket Science's head. She, is, she has got herself in a scenario where she's trapped as she continues to push and push. And she is not happy yep. with that decision. Snot Rocket Science taking a seat in the penalty area for a forearm. Snot Rocket, a very cerebral player. She was responsible for that point that was gained in that uh, little review conversation that happened in the previous jam. She's always thinking about the game. Right now she's thinking she didn't want that penalty. Yeah. I, I also think she needs to start thinking about how she wants to get through these walls because she's not going to be able to get through in time by just simply trying to push her way through them. She's got to start bouncing. She's got to use her upper body more. She's got to rattle those walls. She's back on the track now. Hard times had five and now is up against a front wall as Allie McKill gets into it there with Dakota Slam and hold Hold her up as long as they can, but there goes hard times with five. And here goes my point. Right now, she's not trying to slide around the corner. She's not trying to rattle the walls loose. That is not rocket science you're referring yes. to. Yes. She is just simply trying to use the power in her legs to get through them. Now, she was able to escape the pack with patience there, but hard times has completed another partial scoring pass, picking up three for Boston and calling off the jam. And it, that seems, the more that we start to see this, that seems to me to be the reason why the lead jam percentage is hurting so badly for her today. Now, no team rises or falls on the fortunes of one skater. This no, is a, no, a, no. A, a team effort. However, Boston moving into the lead, 92. Steel City sitting at 69, 21 and a half minutes remain, and we are now in a timeout. Yes, we are. And, of course, Roller Derby Athletics brings you this timeout. Uh, they, Roller Derby Athletics is not only sponsoring these timeouts, but they want us to take advantage of this break in the action to stand up and stretch it out and do some squats. Well, you, you know, people can't see it on camera. You and I have been squatting we, and flexing we, the whole time. We can time. tell them we're doing all kinds of things, and they can't see us. We're, we are Shh. masters Shh. at the squat right now. If you say it over the, the computer, it has to be true. <laughs> we'd, also like to thank our, <laughs> we'd also like to thank our friends at Nerd Roller Skates. Nerd Roller Skates is Calgary's only quad skate shop, now offering free shipping in Canada. For orders over $150, find them, not surprisingly, at nerdskates.com. And no squats required. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed, they just take money. They don't need you to squat. That's right. Timeout is complete. Action underway. Womanimal jamming for Boston. Hard Rock Candy in that position for Steel Hurton, but it is Woman Animal in lead. And boy, has she really shown herself to be effective in this position. Uh, having not seen her jam this morning, 
she's done a really good job this afternoon. Well, Manimal did get herself into a position where she was captured by CN Power and uh, held in that goat position, and that, that will put a fire under uh, you. Yeah, yeah. All, all of a sudden, that jam comes back to my memory. Yes, she was caught there for pretty much the entire jam. Well, she's certainly been using it for fuel in this bout. Yes. Been tearing up the track in that jammer position for Boston. The thing that, to me, that will be interesting is whether or not they start to move away from some of the girls that have been in the jamming rotation, and I'm talking about Steel Hurton, and start to insert a couple other people just to see if it makes a difference. Leanna Belector going up against Maya Mangleyu. Bit of a mosh pit madness there, but Leanna Belector with long strides able to gain lead as she has so often today. It's amazing. Her percentage has to be through the roof. Just about 21, 21 points separating the teams. Leanna Belector in scoring position. Catches up with that pack. Calls it off as quickly as she can. Four point pickup for Steele. And Nicely yes, done. Leanna Belector able to shut the door on Maya Mangleyu and gain a 4-0 and o jam for Steel City. You got to give that one up to her. You got to give that one up to the jam ref for getting those four whistles out so quickly. Yes, Maya Mangley was uh, appearing in the rearview mirror. No, as as not rocket science lines up right now. Let's take. Let's just watch to see if they play her differently than they play other players. Because she always seems to be up against this same formation. And King playing essentially the same game, just at the rear of the pack. You see these jammers in their separate solitudes, <laughs> grinding away, and this time it's not rocking with patience. She endures, she is lead. Yeah, that time it's not rocket science actually assisted by the fact that her own defense able to hold up Boston. But a nice, Right now, any jam that you're putting points up and shutting down, shutting down Boston in Steel City's case is a win. That's a 4-0 run, and 92-79 makes it a heck of a game. And that's a couple of 4-0s, and you can build a pretty tall tower with yep. bricks made of four points, Bob. Yep, you're absolutely right. 18 minutes remain. And it is the captain of Boston, Rock, skating. Here against Rock Hard Candy. Rock Hard Candy is recycled by Ginger Kid way back. Yeah, she she thought she had an open lane and it sure looked like she did. And she was caught just hard enough to be knocked into the inside of the track. Had to come all the way around. And Steel City trying to run away from Rock. Rock with speed. Oh, cannonballs as Red Rum throws a body in front of Rock, unable to stop her progress, however. Wow. Wow. And that's the full five for Rock. Talk about taking the grenade for the team. <laughs> oh, and Rock comes through again. There's two, three bodies on the floor. Seemingly impervious to the physical attention of Steel City. Rock <laughs> skates like a, like a something. Oh yeah, Rock. Like a rolling Rock. And so focused as she watches her bench. And Steel City putting up a couple of momentum, grabbing jams, and Rock says that's enough of that. <laughs> wow. Boston now in triple digit territory, 104. Steel City, 81. Still within striking distance, Bob, and just about 17 minutes remaining. Oh yeah. there's. So much time left, this, good, this definitely could still go either way. No, and no surprise there. Leanna Belector with lead, just patiently keeping her feet moving until she's able to barge through on that inside. But Hard she, times yeah. is giving chase. But she's so deceptive, deceptively quick. You, you, when you see her barge through that, you're, you're not expecting that burst as she comes out the front of that pack. 
No change to the score in that jam. Oh, I am corrected. A single point going up there for Steele. And here it is. The first time today, Hurricane Heather is going to jam. Straight off the line, Hurricane Heather. She will face Maya Mangle you. A little chatter between the jammers going on in the line there. Unless Maya Mangle you was issuing instructions to her blockers. That might have been the case as Mangle you comes out with lead. Hurricane Heather, oh, just in a flurry of bodies in blue, but Hurricane Heather is free. Now from the pack, Maya Mangalyu on a scoring pass, moves into that pack, which is being held at a standstill as Boston has been able to slow down the tempo. And the interesting thing about the sit block that Hurricane Heather finally shakes to get free is she was sitting on her so hard that when, she, when Hurricane Heather shifted, she fell right on her tail. 108, Boston Massacre Steel City, a score of, now corrected, to 84. And just under 15 minutes remaining. Boston taking the front of the pack. And that is enabling them to hold Leanna Belecter, but only for so long she's out with lead. Slim, I, ca I can't recall a jam this game that she hasn't come out lead. No, she's a lead jam producing machine. And through on a scoring pass there, she has great foot awareness when she's so close to that inside line also, Bob. Yeah, that's a great observation. Flying King, still on the initial. Having difficulty escaping the pack. That's a grand slam, second one. King now in the free and open spaces, but the damage is done. Leanna Belector ramming herself up against that rear wall, calls it as she looks around and sees King. We'll see if she's able to hold King scoreless. Does so with an additional two, but Steel City so close now. Yep. And now that we're about 17 minutes into this last half, all the different things we've seen them tinker with, I think we'll finally start to see the stuff that was working come out. And how much grit is there in Steel City, Bob, as they just came back into this? Now at 97 to Boston Massacre's 108. They wouldn't roll over for Rideau Valley this morning. That's not happening either. Nope. Lead jam here for Boston. Hard times. Number 300, jamming for Boston. Snot Rocket Science, number six, in the yellow for Steel City, giving chase. Hard times, dives into the pack, grabs what she can, She's and it's a single. One. Yep. This would not be a good time to get up to walk the dog, grab a beer, put a pizza in the oven, give yourself the 20 minutes. It'll be worth it. Yeah, I think you're right, Bob. I think we're skating towards an even more exciting conclusion than we would have imagined at half. Rock hard candy. Oh, stepping over Ginger Kid and able to do so and keep her skates fair. She is lead. That's just sheer determination. <laughs> that's, that's not something you teach people. She, she stepped over a clothesline. And just before Woman Animal is able to step into the pack, that is a three-point pickup for Steel City. And we are looking. If you are in the car and you're only able to listen to us, you should now know that they are under 10 points apart. Boston Massacre, 109. Steel City, a score of 111 and a half minutes remaining. If you're in the next room and you can hear me, you should come in and look at the screen, <laughs> folks. Exactly. Oh! A, a relative rarity yes. in this bout. A power jam. And Maya Mangle you. 
on the power jam for Boston. Only, only thing concerning about that is not really looking like she's coming in with a plan nor any speed. Maya Mengu, she looked to her bench. I think she has instructions to call it before the jam expires so they can get a power start. Yeah, I think you're right. And again, she signals. She gives, she gives the blockers a hand. All right, signal. that didn't happen because Leanna Belector now back on the track. So no power start for Boston in the next one. But Maya Mengu, you able to put up a grand slam. Maya Mango, you nice step from inside to outside, gets a little jammer support there. Leanna Belector being held up there. That was Stevie Nixer sitting on Leanna Belector to help out her jammer, and the two jammers now entering the pack together, and Maya Mango, you calls it off just before Leanna Belector can engage with the pack. Yep, Leanna Belector coming out of the box, having taken the star off her head, trying to sneak in there. Puts it back on just before she comes up on the pack, but that doesn't fool Maya Mangle. Leanna will think she earned one on that play. No score awarded, and Boston Massacre reestablishing that tenuous lead now. A score of 123. Steel City with 100. Nine and a half minutes remaining. Well, 14 points has got to be as big as we've seen a jam today, uh, for this game. And power jam's hard to come by in yep. this bout. All kinds of penalties, but very few to the jammers. Lead jam here to Steel City. The River Kicks, who has had a bit of a rest. We haven't seen her on the jammer line lately. Not since the very beginning of the game. Fresh legs important now. And River Kicks does the job. She gets, she pulls the lead jam, she pulls three, Much time to do it. Late penalty on the play, uh, Ginger Kid, I believe, wearing the pivot stripe for Boston, going to the penalty box. Boston's bench just noticing that and pulling the helmet cover off one of their blockers there on the track. 20 points separating the teams. 123 for Boston. Steel City at 103. Eight and a half minutes remaining. Uh, Not rocket science again, kind of taking the difficult way through. She's stuck in the pack. That allows hard times to become lead jammer. Hard times for Boston. I mean, hard times the person. It's not hard times for Boston. They're winning. It, obviously, it's way too easy for me to say, but it really seems like she's making this too hard for herself. Harder on herself than she needs to. Hard times through with a four-point pass. Decides to call that off before Snot Rocket Science can engage with the pack. That is textbook. That's how you do it. That's the way they wrote it. And it's one thing that's remained the same since day one. <laughs> Seven and a half minutes remaining. Maya Mangleyu on the jammer line. She will face Hard Rock Candy. Hard Rock Candy, oh, jumping to the front, getting into the thick of things. But that will find her rebuffed into the center of the pack. Maya Mangaliu, she has lead. And a track cutting penalty, Power Jam Boston. Yeah, and of course we saw that from the last jam at Hard Rock Candy. She did kind of that same type of thing, except it worked to her advantage. This time the loss of body control forces her into a eventually into a track cut she did just throw herself bodily into the center of things unfortunately that forced her to put a foot wrong now she's sitting in that penalty box 30 seconds for maya mangle you to get there's five and perhaps more to come play continues Hard Rock Candy back. Another penalty being assessed oh, here. Hard Rock Candy hitting the floor hard. She sees Pancake blocked. Maya Mangaliu continues to skate on. She is a multi-point jam for Boston. Right now, Boston doing 
what they uh, do, you know, they're doing a much better job of managing the clock in this game than they did this morning. And in that situation, they, they ride that thing out for the two minutes. Because as you and I both know, right now the point differential is more extreme than it has been at any other time. And we've not seen anybody come close to, to uh, pulling that together in a jam or two. No, they've been very close all along, Bob. But Boston here trying to put some nails in the coffin. Of course, Steel City not rolling over for anybody. Leanna Electra skating against Wom Animal. And a rarity is she's run to the inside and recycled. Wom Animal has lead for Boston. Ginger Kid receiving a blocking to the head penalty. And oh! Leanna Belector faking the star pass to Hurricane Heather. The star stash <laughs> yeah. by Leanna Belector. She's able to sneak through the pack. She's done that successfully a couple of times today. Seems to be in vogue nowadays. Well, Manimal <laughs> slips through the pack one more time and calls off the jam. We'll see where that leaves us on the scoreboard, Bob. Just less than five minutes remaining. Boston Massacre 144, Steel City 103. And, of course, very quickly, we want to say thank you to KT Tape, Elastic Sports Tape for pain relief and support, available at the Toronto Roller Derby merch table at the bunker or kttape.com. On the 1234 Skate Company start line, we see there Lil Payne. I'm sorry, it is Hard Times skating against River Kicks. Hard Times has lead, but River Kicks giving pursuit. River Kicks, very quick, very effective jammer. And of course right now those fresh legs, something that they're hoping is going to, is going to uh, kick start the final moments of this game for them. And River Kicks and a able to put up a three point steal there. For Steel City, able to put up a 3-0 and o pass. And a bit of life on the Steel City bench. They liked that. Now with a 41-point deficit, it'll be interesting to see how that final timeout is managed. Well, I think it just happened. <laughs> and, of course, that timeout... Brought to you by Roller Derby Athletics. They provide off-skate training specifically for Derby. Visit them online at rollerderbyathletics.com. Clock frozen at 3.31, Bob. And while we're at it, we might as well say thank you to Wicked Skateware. And, of course, we all know that Wicked Skateware loves to make you look and feel fabulous. Plus, they like glitter. Like you and I, Slim, they like glitter. And neon. A lot of neon. I enjoy all those things. Visit WickedSkateCare.com or, Wicked, or hashtag Wicked Skateware to experience the shenanigans. Speaking of hashtags, you can talk to us. You can use talk to, that's T A L K, numeral to Q C C on the Twitter. Three and a half minutes remain. There we go off the 1234 jam line. Hurricane Heather jamming for Steel City. She is held up at the back. Flying King nudged out in turn number one. Recovers. King is lead. And she has been king of the track this entire game. She's had a phenomenal, phenomenal game. Most successful jammer that we've probably seen out on the track. Flying King. Upended, forced to return, recycled there. Bone Crusher doing the damage. But Hurricane Heather also being recycled. Both jammers reapplying themselves to the pack. We'll see what is happening now. Flying kick through on the inside. That is a full five scoring pass. Yeah, and they're willing to go ahead and keep going, and I think that makes sense. 
If they could keep her out there for the full two minutes, the, real, the chances of giving anything up or much up is very little. Flying King dancing back and forth, looking for a way through the pack. Hands to hips. King was ready for the arrival of Hurricane Heather. Calls it with an additional three points for Boston. Two minutes remain. And that, and that jam actually was most likely the nail in the coffin for Steel City. Steel City at this point out of timeouts. They do have a challenge left. Leanna Belector. Getting physical with Ginger Kid at the front, but Ginger Kid holding her up just long enough for Maya Mengliu to become lead. The Jammers coming together. Jammer to jammer contact. Maya Mengliu cannot stop the progress of Leanna Belector. Maya Mengliu looks to her bench, hoping to kill the clock now. Yeah, signaling to, signaling to her blockers what she wanted. Then with a roadblock of bodies in front of her, I think she decides to call it off. And Steel City will use that challenge, Bob. They've got it. <laughs> They're going to use it. They had hands in the air. They might have some questions about what transpired in that jam. Yes. What shoes are you wearing? What's for lunch? Any challenge right now? Uh, it looks like a, an in-depth discussion. <laughs> Boston Massacre 156 Steel City 50 points behind them at 106 106 coincidentally what is left on the clock following this bout the Battle of Ontario Rideau Valley Toronto CN Power coming up That should be no less exciting than what we have just witnessed. We'd like to thank our friends at Come As You Are, founded in 1997. Come As You Are Cooperative is the world's only anti-capitalist, sex-positive, worker-owned sex shop. Check them out in person or visit comeasyouare.com to learn more. Of course, we want to remind you that we have a full slate of games again tomorrow. And it looks like Boston has used their official review. We're either extending the same conversation or Boston has a question of their own. <laughs> And what do we have coming up tomorrow, Bob? Well, tomorrow at 11 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time, we have the Battle of the B teams, which would be Toronto, Toronto Bay's Street Bruisers versus the Boston B team. B That's the party, B party. I believe yes. they're called. Uh, at 1 o'clock, uh, we have Rideau against uh, Boston. That'll be both of the charter teams. At 3 o'clock, it'll be Toronto's Bay Street Bruisers up against the Steel Hurtons B team. And, of course, the highlight game will be Toronto's CN Power versus Steel City at 5 o'clock. And, of course, remember, this is, not turn this is not a tournament. It's not tournament style. This is one of the deemed derby events as all of the lineups have been slated, slated previously. And Slim, what do we know? What was happening was that uh, Steel City was requesting that points be awarded in the previous jam. Uh, no additional points were awarded by the referees. No change to gameplay. And uh, Boston was requesting a misconduct penalty for the hit against the jammer, which happened after the whistle, which seems to have happened behind one of the pillars in the bunker because I didn't see <laughs> I it. Didn't see but it no either. change to gameplay occurred there either. So 
Nothing happened. Is there, we go. Up. there we go. A little conversation to all determine. Let's, let's just let it remain the same. But both teams advocating passionately, playing passionately here. It's not rocket science, doing what she's wanted to do all bout long. She's picked up lead, and with a burst of speed, she's inside that pack. Oh, Hurricane Heather being thrust to the ground, trying to block for And this is a power start for Snout Rocket side, so part of that penalty assessed against uh, the Boston Gemmer must have, must have been upheld. And though she is getting through, they are obviously giving her significant obstacles that, are, that is eating up precious time. So Maya Mangu, you back from the penalty box. She did serve the regular penalty. She escaped the additional misconduct, but now skating on. And we're looking at a clock, the period clock winding down to 13 seconds. Got a little over a minute left on the jam clock. It's and not rocket science, comes out with four. Four for Maya Mangle, you also. Of course, we would expect that it's not rocket science is going to take this down to the end of the jam. Official time has expired. The jam will skate to its natural conclusion. Snow Rocket Science. Oh. oh, taking a hit there from Shark Week. Dragged to the back of the pack. Boy, when Shark Week makes contact with people, it's got to hurt. 25 seconds remaining. Maya Mangle, you making contact there. With Necrophiliac. And the two jammers there making contact. Now Rocket Science drafting in the wake of Maya Mangalyu. Maya Mangalyu puts out an arm, tries to stop the progress there of Snout Rocket Science. Both of these jammers still in scoring position as the seconds tick away, but there are none left. That's right. And your unofficial final, 169. Oh, wait a second, that might change. Scoreboard at the moment reads 169-127. That was a 21-13 run by Steel City to finish it off. We'll see if that score holds. Definitely a victory for Boston. But yes, yeah, definitely a big enough gap that that's not going to, nothing should change the outcome of this. I tell you, Slim, what a game. Fantastic, Bob. And it's it really a matter, I guess, of um, Boston getting Steel City to play in their end of the pool. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, we saw more we saw more changes in the way lineups came on, onto the track, left the track. <laughs> hit each other for defensive formations in one game that you would usually see in an entire 10-team tournament. Certainly a lot of coaching on the fly happening. I'd like to see some numbers on this afterwards, but I would wager that just as they did in the Rideau Valley game this morning, Steel City had the majority of the lead jammer percentages. Oh, I, I believe that. But it did not help them on the scoreboard. Yep, I believe that. Uh, we all know that Leanna Lecter, I recall one time out of all of her jams that she did not get lead jam and uh, she alone had had to put them at least close to the 50, 40 percent or so something like that for the whole for the entire jamming core but there we have it boston able to turn this into a street fight bob coming out with the victory 168 over the steel hurton of pittsburgh with them with a score of 127 Stay tuned, folks, here at Quad City Chaos 2015, the Battle of Ontario yet to come with Rideau Valley and Toronto's CN Power. Yep, it won't be any less exciting than what you just saw. Again, if you're enjoying what you're watching, share it with your friends. Get it on Facebook, send it out on Twitter, and uh, come at, tune in and watch us tomorrow. He is Bob Noxious. I am Lightning Slim. Go nowhere. Stay right here with us.